Hello, Scrappy friends. Welcome back and welcome to another edition of Borders to Pages. We haven't done this in a while and normally I use the 110 scrapbooking idea and sketchbook or I pick something off the blog and then recreate it. But today I'm going to do something a little different and I'm going to build my own creation and it's what I've kind of nicknamed as the exploding border. And that's because things are gonna be popping off of this strip of paper and kind of taking on a life of its own. So I hope you like this idea. You'll have to let me know. I've done this before in my scrapbooks, but I've never shown it here on YouTube. So that's what I want to do today. And as you see, I have my tray here with all my pieces that I prepped a few days ago. and. Are they looking a little more mixed up than usual? That's because I just knocked this over onto the floor and had to pick them all up. So yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of dog hair in here too. So that's not good. But yeah, they're really mixed up now. So I'll be rooting through these, trying to find just the right shape. I'm gonna be incorporating a lot of these pieces. So if you're wondering where these came from, these came from um, a bunch of different punches that I just sat down one day and punched out a bunch of different pieces. I'll link the video where I prepped for this um, at the end of today's video. So if you wanna go take a look and you can kind of see which punches I used and how I tweaked them a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna to start today by bringing in two of these border punches that we punched out in that first video. And I only wanna take a small piece of each one, maybe maybe about six inches or so. I'm not gonna measure. I'll measure for you guys. Yeah, six inches. And put the other side for another use. And as you see, I'm working on my 12 by 12 um, silicone mat because I thought it was gonna be easier to build on and use my tape at the same time. And so that you can see. I just want part of this sticking out the side like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this fishnet border piece. I'm just gonna cut off roughly about six inches and I'm going to put it up here. So there is no rhyme or reason to this today. You use whatever you like and whatever you want and you just start building. And so it, the wackier it looks, the better for me. <laughs> I want it to not look like a, like a uniform. That's why I'm using two pieces of two different borders. I'm just gonna put one at the top and one at the bottom and on alternating sides. And as I go through today, I'm probably just going to be moving things around until I like what I see. So this, for example, I don't think I need the whole piece. So I'm gonna cut it right in half. There we go. I kind of like that. So it's kind of jaggedy here and a little bit more scallopy and softer points on this side. My next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start kind of like right here in the center or somewhere where somewhere about in the center and I'm just gonna start creating. I'm gonna bring in all kinds of things like these firework punch outs and just start building along until I get a creation that I think is pretty good. And then I'm just gonna keep adding my repositionable tape on because it's easier to move the pieces around. Starting with three of the like items right here in the center. So it kind of gives me some kind of beginning balance. Okay, and then I'm gonna just start going up and down. I'll probably put on some kind of music for you here so you can just watch my process.
now you'll see I kind of went up. I got a little close to the top, so I wanted to come back down. But before I go on, I'm going to look at my sticker sheets and see if there's anything that I want to bring in, and then I'm going to build up around that. So let's see. I want kind of a small title, like this one's here. Ghouls just want to have fun. I like that. And, but I do like this Happy Halloween. I think it's gonna be a little bit more generic. So I am gonna put that up onto some foam so I could play around with it. And then I'm thinking right here, kind of in the center where I had those three fireworks going out and I have this open spot right there. I like that. And you probably saw I moved down this scallop a little bit. And I did that because I thought that might be a great place to put a sticker. And then as far as some other stickers, yeah, I'm gonna go with the little crow right here and kind of put it on this orange scallop. I like the witch's hat. And I'm thinking kind of come right up here at the tip top. I'm gonna tuck it in like that and have it coming off the top of the border. And that's probably as high as I'll go with this. However, I am thinking maybe a bat to come in right here on top of that green flower because I have a lot of green going on. So I'm gonna bring that little bat right there. I'm thinking I want to bring in this spider web and kind of put it down here, maybe over the little arrow, and then take one of the spiders and of course put them in the web. So just kind of tucking in a bunch of little icons here and there just to give it a little bit more playful look. I'm liking it. I know I have a hole right here I want to fill in, so I'm gonna come back in here and look. Um, let's see. Kind of like the circles. Might be too big though. Let's see, let's tuck it under. It's really just about playing with what you like and where you wanna put it. There, I do like that. Let's look for some banners and throw some banners in here. We got a purple. Remember, it's just little random pieces and it's all exploding off of the border. Right in here, I think it would be really cute to put maybe one of these. This is the cap from the, the little petal from the extra petal that always pu punches out from the embossed flower. Let's put that down here, there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pop this little spider and spider web up onto some foam. There. Let's see, I'm liking this little candy corn. There we go. I know I wanna come in with this orange sticker that says October 31st. I'm gonna trim it down. I like that. One little trick I'm gonna do with it. Is I'm gonna put this up onto some cardstock. I want it to have a little bit little bit more dimension, but 
also be kind of stiff so it's not flopping around and definitely not be sticky on the uh, on the other side so I'm just going to trim it up and tuck it back in and under there we go I like that a lot now I'm going to grab some little finishing touches and kind of come back through here. I'm going to bring in some green gems from my stash and I'm just going to for sure go through and hit all these little flowers that I use and give them a green center. Then maybe sprinkle a few around in some other places, maybe right in here little places where I see I want to cover up some things and and actually that gives me an odd number and it's really pleasing to the eye so I'm going to keep that but what I also have is some of the little dots that came out of different punches like the flower punch and stuff and I think I'm just going to come back through and see if we need a spot like I like that one right there here's a black one I thought I would come down here somewhere maybe even right there and then I'm gonna come back to my sticker sheet because I saw this little this little lollipop on here I thought that was super cute because it looks like a ghost and I thought I'm gonna tuck that in right here so it's kind of on that banner and I think I'm gonna pop this little bat up onto some foam yeah I like it much better up onto some foam I'm going to come back to this sticker right here that says Booyah. And I'm going to trim it down a little bit. I'm going to take off the yeah, trim it a little more, and I'm going to pop that right up on this banner. Keep trimming it, and this one will say Boo and put it on that banner. There we go, that is my exploded border. You see how everything is just popping out? I love it, I love it. I do went a little higher than I wanted to and I have this big open area down here. So I think I'm gonna bring in one more thing because I just want to fill this in down here. And maybe a nice big cauldron would do it. Yep, I like that. I'll tuck it underneath our October 31st, kind of put it at an angle. And then one last thing I was just looking at here are the little stars. And I'll do one like that, and then a smaller one off to the side like that. There we go. I like that flow much better. I'm gonna add one more little gem right down here to there and one more at the tippy top to kind of end our border top and bottom and there we go now in all my other videos when i did a border to pages i like to create the companion piece so i don't want to leave this one out <laughs> so i'm going to create a companion i'll be using a lot of the same elements but this time I'm going to bring in a piece of purple. This is the gravity grape. And I'm just gonna cut a little piece. This is, let's see, four inches. And we'll just place that there. And then I had some of this left over from that, which we can hardly even see now, but it is popping through there. And let's see, I think with this one, I'll have a little more showing. And go ahead, I'm gonna trim that off right here so I have a little short on each side, I like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm just gonna start building up around here.
Okay, there we go. Oh, it's super cute. I'm going to um, bring in some gems and to give this a few finishing touches. And you see how I just made this little kind of exploding companion piece to go with our exploding border. And then the last thing I wanna do is for our little sign here, I have this little boo sticker that came from my stash. And I thought it would be super cute just like that. Now, there we go. We have our exploding border and our companion piece. We are ready to clean this up and get some pages out and get some photos in our albums. So hold on and I'll be right back. And while I'm doing that, <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you to please go ahead and click that like button. I surely would appreciate it. And let me know, let me know in the comments, do you like this kind of border or do you want to stay more traditional <laughs> with our borders? So I'm gonna clean up, you do that, and we'll both come back in one moment. This took me a little bit. I had to really think about the background pieces for this page. Um, I tried black, it was too dark. I tried some pattern paper. It just really soaked up all the different pieces that I have here. I tried white and white didn't do the border justice. So I ultimately decided on this dark purple and I think it's perfect. I think you could really see all the detail in the border. I'm going to put the border off to the side here and just leave a little bit of a gap between the last thing protruding off here and the edge and then have all this room for my photos. And my companion piece, I am willing to still play around with that. So I'm just gonna put it over here on the right hand side for now. Okay, let me first bring in my photos because I think I'm gonna need those to kind of figure out and, and walk you through how I'm going to create the rest of this page. When you know when I'm creating these borders, I like to keep everything else about my page pretty simple because it just took me a while to make this and now I wanna get my pages done and get them in my album. So I have some pictures here. Um, I've already trimmed them down a little bit and these are pictures of <laughs> my family and I walking through one of those big, big fancy Halloween stores where they have props and different things that you can uh, play with and we were just having so much fun. You can see based on the photos what uh, was going on here and why we were looking for anything to kind of give us some fun and excitement. <laughs> so we were in this Halloween shop just posing at these silly creatures and there were things you can walk through and buttons to push and we just had a good old time. So these pictures I put in, I cut down to a three and a half by five and a half. And I think I want those all in a vertical row. And then over here, kind of in a grid, these are also uh, five and a half by three and a half like those. And then I just cut these photos down to see how they would fit and what I wanted left in the photo. So that's gonna be my layout right there. Again, I'm still gonna play with this um, companion piece. Plus I need to bring in a journaling spot. So what I was thinking is I want to pull in papers from the Booyah collection. And we have this really fun purple, yellow, orange stars. And I'm kind of thinking I might want to make that into a frame foundation before I even begin adding on my photos. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I will be using the miter technique today. So I'll just cut some strips and then miter the corners and cut down the purple. And then I'll put my photos back on and see how we like it. Okay, so let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, here's the layout with the frame background. I like it, I think it adds to a lot and a lot of the playfulness. This layout is all about the playfulness, right? From the border to my photos and now to the background of my layout. Okay, so now I, I like a lot of color on my layouts, as you can tell from my border. And so I wanna bring in a little bit more color to this page. I thought I would bring in this colorful polka dot paper and maybe layer it behind these photos over here. 
So it'll look like that. I think that's gonna be fun and playful. So I'll cut a chunk out for over here. And then for this side, I thought maybe the back side of my star paper, I had some left over. Maybe I'll bring in a strip and run it horizontally across the page here and then put all of these photos up on there. So I think I like that. And then once we do that, I might come back in and map this photo right here. And I guess our little companion piece is gonna live over here somewhere but it's a big area, so I need to bring in some kind of a journaling card as well. So I will look for that. I'll get these cut down and I'll be right back. Okay, trick or treat. <laughs> While I was gone, I decided that I liked the black over on this side, the black polka dots better because these photos just got really washed out with the orange. So I changed those two around. I put the black polka dot over here and the yellow I mean, and the orange stripes over here. Now, I think that added a lot of spunk and character to this layout. So I am done adding the pattern paper, but what I wanna do is add a photo mat to this photo here. So for that, I'm just gonna bring in a piece of orange cardstock. Okay, so while I was gone, I'd also decided on my journaling mat. And I went through my little box I keep here on my rolly cart and I found this one and I really liked the colors and this zigzag, but it was only partial card that I had used the other piece for. I liked the stars on the back. I was trying to figure out how I could do it and use my companion piece. And then I slid it back here and wow, did that make my companion piece pop. And I, I really love that. So I decided I'm going to <laughs> give this, my little companion piece, a little home and adhere it right to there. I like that. I like it a lot. It kind of just really stands out. It brings in some green, not the same color green, but you guys know, I think green is green <laughs> and it doesn't matter. So I do think that really helps that a lot. I'm going to keep it there. So for my true journaling card, I found this one in my stash. I do like the black, but the lines are going the wrong way. I need to figure out how I'm going to do this with the space I have left. So my first thought was I can now layer up my journaling area with my companion piece. Uh, I can turn it over. It introduces gray, which is not so bad. I do have some beige spider webs over here. So I think it would work. Um, and of course the black is good too. And it has a little spot on it from a, something I must have decided not to use it on. And so I thought, let's tuck that in. But it's not really giving me a lot of space to journal. So I'm gonna have to really play with this. And I'll have this couple lines here and then this area as well. So maybe I could even come over a little further and make it a little bit bigger. One last finishing touch that I want to bring in. I'm thinking maybe a flower to kind of go with our flowers over there. And I just want to build up around here a little bit. So I don't want to cover up the swirl. I do like the swirl because I feel like it goes with my page and it has that little star there. So that's cute. And then maybe one of our creepy gum leaves that we punched and tuck that maybe right in here. Yeah, maybe trailing off onto our card right there, make them all seem like they go together. So it does limit my journaling some more, so I might have to scoot everything aside. And that's that. Now one last thing is I want to bring in another green gem and put it right in the center of that flower. I spent all that time making the border, then my page should be pretty simple, right? And now I can tell this fun story about us goofing around in this Halloween shop, enjoying all the Halloween decorations, just getting out and enjoying life. And I think that I captured it with this border, the companion piece, and my layout. So I hope you like it, and I hope it inspires you in some way to get your supplies out and make a page, okay? Well, take care, everybody, and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. And if you haven't seen the prep video, here you go. It's right here, as well as 
The first layout I created with all these fun little punch outs will be listed right here for you. Okay, bye bye.